Hello class welcome to connected In this video we will learn the story of the unification of Germany We will discuss Zollverein revolution of 1848 the Frankfurt parliament the rule of William 1 Germany's war with Denmark the Austro-Prussian war and finally the Franco-Prussian war Before we start let's understand the background context Will somebody volunteer to read with me After the defeat of Napoleon in the battle of Waterloo the map of Europe was redrawn at the congress of Vienna in 1815 The Vienna settlement had disappointed the German liberals They were hoping for a united Germany but they got the German confederation of 39 states which included the states of Prussia, Austria, Bavaria, Hanover, Saxony and Württemberg. The states in the confederation differed in size and strength. Some were big like Austria and Prussia whereas the others were very small. The German confederation was presided over by Austria as decided at the Vienna Congress. The Austrian ruler did not show much interest in Germany but opposed the spirit of nationalism in Germany. He did not allow the German confederation to become powerful. Austria always tried to keep Germany weak and divided. Before we continue, will someone else read the text with me? Prussia was another powerful state of the German confederation and was under the rule of the autocratic rulers. In the 18th century, Prussia had defeated Austria twice and in the 19th century, it had made a mark by leading Germany in the war against Napoleon. Prussia would have established a powerful German state before 1848. But its rulers after Frederick the Great had no vision and were inefficient. The feelings of nationalism in Germany were kept alive by the writings of the poets and the writers who had glorified the German language and its rich historical tradition. The process of German unification had taken a definite step when the Zollverein was formed. Moving on Let us now understand more about Zollverein. Will somebody volunteer to read with me? The first step towards the German unification was taken up through the creation of the Zollverein or the Customs Union. There was no free movement of goods within Germany because of the different custom duties in different states of Germany. Commercial treaties were signed by the different states which agreed to carry out free trade among them by removing custom duties which were levied on the goods passing from one state to another. In 1819, Prussia signed such a treaty with one of the small states. Then most of the states came under the Zollverein. Though Germany was politically divided, she had achieved unity in the economic sphere. This inspired people to think of a national union. It was through the Zollverein that Prussia connected herself to the other small states through the financial bonds which established her economic leadership. Austria had not joined the Zollverein and was indifferent to it. This helped Prussia to take the lead in the process of German unification. Children, let's now talk about the revolution of 1848. Will somebody else volunteer to read with me? The year of 1848 was a period of revolutions in Europe. It began first in France and then in Germany and in many other European states. In 1848 there was discontent in the different parts of the confederation and among the different sections of the society. The educated classes wanted freedom of speech, press and education and they demanded national unity and a constitutional government. The working class wanted economic security. Austria was the main opponent of the popular demands in Germany. But because of the uprising in Austria, Metternich had to flee from Austria. It was the success of the revolution in 1848 that the educated middle class tried to unite themselves together and implement the nationalistic principles. 
It was at this time that the German Confederation had agreed to form the National Assembly to establish a united democratic government for Germany. Next, let's talk about the Frankfurt Parliament. Will somebody else volunteer to read with me? The National Assembly met in July 1848 at Frankfurt to deliberate on framing a constitution. This assembly came to be known as the Frankfurt Parliament. It decided that a German empire was to be founded as a close federation of our 30 states. It was to be headed by the King of Prussia as the emperor and was to comprise a legislature with two houses, one representing the states and the other the people. The assembly requested Frederick William IV of Prussia to be the emperor, but he refused since he believed in the theory of the divine rights of the kings. and therefore could not accept the authority from the common masses thus the assembly failed and had to be dissolved next let's talk about the rule of william 1 will somebody else volunteer to read with me william 1 ascended the throne of prussia in 1861 after the death of his brother frederick william 4 He was in favor of united Germany with Austria and was keen on introducing army reforms to make Prussia powerful. But his plans were rejected by the Prussian Assembly. He then appointed Bismarck as his minister. Thus began a new chapter in the history of Prussia. Next, let's talk about Otto von Bismarck. Will somebody else volunteer to read with me? The great questions of the day are not to be solved by speeches and parliamentary votes, but by blood and iron. These were the words of Bismarck after he was appointed as a minister, which clearly sounded the change that would be introduced in Germany. He had definite views regarding Germany's unification and they were supported by King William I. First he believed in increasing the military strength of the Prussian army which he did despite opposition. Second he believed that the unification of Germany was to be achieved by the king of Prussia. Third he held the view that if Germany was to be united under Prussia then Austria should be defeated. And this was possible only through military conflicts. Thus Germany was involved in three major conflicts which had completed the process of German unification. These were the war with Denmark 1864, Austro-Prussian War 1866 and the Franco-Prussian War 1870 to 1871. Now let's talk about the war with Denmark in 1864. Will somebody else volunteer to read with me? War with Denmark took place over the Schleswig-Holstein question. The Duchy of Schleswig was under the control of Denmark whereas Holstein was a member of the German Confederation. When the Danish ruler tried to incorporate Holstein into Denmark, Prussia resented it. Bismarck opposed it and convinced Austria to help him in dealing with Danish ruler with Austria's help. Bismarck declared Austro-Prussian war on Denmark and defeated it. But after the conflict, the two duchies became a bond of contention between Prussia and Austria, which in turn led to the Austro-Prussian war. Now let's talk about the Austro-Prussian war of 1866. Will somebody else volunteer to read with me? Austro-Prussian War was no longer a conflict for the control of two duchies but turned out to be a conflict for the leadership of Germany. The Austrians were defeated at Sadowa. Austria retired from Germany and agreed to allow Prussia to reorganize the German states. Now let's talk about the Franco-Prussian War of 1870 to 71. Will somebody else volunteer to read with me? 
After the Austro-Prussian War of 1866, Bismarck annexed those states in the north which had earlier resisted Prussia and the North German Confederation was formed. The states in the south were not ready for annexation. Bismarck had realized that in this process France was the greatest obstacle. Thus the Franco-Prussian War was fought in which Napoleon III of the France was defeated and he surrendered to Prussia. The war ended with the Treaty of Frankfurt in 1871 by which France gave Alsace and Lorraine to Germany and she also paid a huge war indemnity for Prussia. In January 1871 William I King of Prussia assumed the title of Kaiser Emperor of Germany at Versailles in Paris and thus was born the German Empire. With this the process of unification of Germany was complete. children with this we have now finished the chapter let's recall what we have learned by filling in these blanks you have 1 minute to try this out Well done students now let's match how many blanks you fill correctly with this answer sheet So that's it for today. Thank you class and I hope you all had fun learning.